Hello everyone. Today I am going to explain you about two special models in time series analysis, uh, the purely random process and random walk process. We usually use the word process to specify time series. It's another term that we use to uh, denote a time series. We call uh, process. Well, we call the time series as a process. So this is about purely random process. It is a special probabilistic model. If you go through the definition, you can uh, see that uh, it is uh, just the random error component. If you have some time series data set that does not show any trend or change in the variance or any seasonal pattern, that means you have only uh, that time series have only irregular variation. Uh, it has a random fluctuation. So if such a time series is called as a purely random process. It does not, uh, the mean does not change over the time, variance cannot, variance is not changing over the time, it does not show any uh, seasonal patterns, repeating patterns, if so, that time series contains only the regular variation and we call such a time series as a purely random process. Then y, we can denote yt equals zt and zt is a independently and identically distributed random variable with mean 0 and constant variance. And for a purely random process, if you take the autocovariance function gamma h, uh, it equals to the variance when h equals 0. You already know when h equals 0, gamma 0 means the variance. And uh, at any other lag, autocovariance function does not exist. It, it equals to 0. It does not have any value because the variable, the values, observations are independent. Uh, similarly, for the autocorrelation function, that is the ratio between the gamma h and gamma 0, uh, autocovariance function at lag 0 equals to 1 and at any other lag, autocorrelation function equals to 0. These are the special properties for, P, for a POD random process. And this is an example for a purely random process. The first plot is a time series plot. The second one is autocorrelation function, ACF. So here you cannot see any changes in the mean level, no trends, no change in the variance, no repeating patterns are there. That means only regular variation is there. Uh, it, it shows a horizontal movement, some fluctuations, random fluctuations. By that way, you can identify it as a purely random process or a white noise process. We called a purely random process as a white noise process as well. And in ACF, if you plot a ACF for a white noise process, you will, fi you, you will find all the uh, coefficients at all the lags in the ACF lies between the two confidence limits. All the uh, autocorrelation function at all the lags will be within the confidence limit. If so, we cannot see, we cannot find any significant autocorrelation function at any of the lags. That means that process is a white noise process which contains only random fluctuations, irregular variations. So you can use time series plot or the ACF to detect the white noise property for a given time series. In addition to that, there is a statistical test available to test whether a series is white noise or not. So that is the l junk box test. In this te test, we uh, use H0 as data are independently distributed and H1 data are not independently distributed. This is the test statistic used within this test. And you can see the definition for the terms used here. Here, uh, n is the number of observations in your time series or the length of the time series. And RK is sample autocorrelation coefficient at lag K, and H is the number of lags being tested. So you can set a value for H. Uh, you have to decide the value of H. Uh, for example, if you take H as 10, that means you are considering the first 10 of uh, for the first 10 autocorrelation coefficient to uh, make the decision regarding the white noise property of the time series. So, if you are not given the value of h, you can decide the value of h. It can be 10 or 12, 
usually in some softwares uh, it is used as 12 or 24 so you have to decide the value of h if you are not given the value and this test statistic follows the chi-square distribution with degrees of freedom equals h uh, if you take h as 12 so this uh, test statistic follows the chi-square di distribution with degrees of freedom equals 12 so when you are given a data set to test the white noise property uh, within that uh, time series, first you have to calculate, first you have to identify the values for n, h, k and r, k. Then you have to calculate the value of q, the value of the test statistic and then depending on the value of h, you have to find the table value from the chi-square distribution table and compare the value of the test statistic with that table value and you have to make the decision depending on the table value and the calculated test statistics value. There is another uh, special model. We call this model as a random walk model or random walk process. So this is the model. This is the notation for a random walk process. Uh, yt is the variable and if you can represent yt as uh, yt minus 1 plus some error here again either t is a white noise process if you can uh, represent yt as a summation of a white noise process and its previous immediate previous value that means your time series yt is a random walk process so i have given here an example for a time series plus and a ACA for a white noise process. Uh, here you can see what do you think about the stationarity for the random walk process. Sorry, uh, these are the plots for random walk uh, process. So what do you think about the stationarity for a random walk process? Here you can clearly see there is a change in the mean level in the time series plot which means it cannot be a stationary process and also in ACA there are large number of lags which has significant value for the autocorrelation coefficient and this autocorrelation coefficient goes to zero after large number of lags. It, it takes large number of lags to become zero. That is another indication for a non-stationary time series. If you can see large number of lags with significant autocorrelation coefficient or if you can see uh, the autocorrelation function becomes closer to zero after large number of lags that means the process can be a non-stationary process so looking at this plot we can uh, easily say that why a random walk process is not a stationary process here i have given some questions so finding answer for this these questions you can prove that prove theoretically that the random walk process is not a stationary process so try to find the answer for these questions. I would like to uh, share my answer in my next video. So if you, this is the end of the lesson. If you find this lesson as useful, please like, share and subscribe so that others can also learn. Thank you very much.